All right. Got it. Hi, uh, welcome again to, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm an, a night, nightly news anchor. <laughs> I like that. I like welcome it. Welcome again to, uh, to uh, Comparing Notes, Mr. John Pogachar, uh, founder of Love on Every Billboard, author, coach, artist, guitarist, singer, songwriter, international film star. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And myself, I love uh, James Warda, and I just do stuff. So, oh, so much stuff. Yeah. So, much. so uh, hi, John. How are you? Good, James. How are you? Good. 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 It looks like you're sitting in front of an oven. Yeah, I'm sitting at, at as I'm sitting at a table. I'm at an estate that I'm clearing out, and today is my last day, which feels so good. Um, I feel so good and I, at least and there's all this clutter around me but I'm leaving I'm leaving the clutter for somebody else to to um <laughs> eliminate so now when you say you're clearing it out it kind of sounds like you're a, a thief you're like you're, you're not a thief oh, <laughs> like no I'm not a thief yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not a crook <laughs> So you could tell I grew up in the 60s. Yes. So, um, but no, I got hired as a contract as a contract employee to come in and start to clean out this estate. And just amazing what people collect and amazing how much stuff we hang on to and not able to let go of stuff. Because hmm. like, you know, drawers of rubber bands or drawers of straws, you know, and just like, yeah. It's just interesting. Yeah, that is interesting um, because, you know, I think about myself, I'd like to hold on to things too, um, you know, because I think things for me hold memories, mm -hmm. you know, memories of moments. So it's hard for me to give up certain things, like especially, you know, if my kids made something for me or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it can be something as simple as a, 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 a branch I found one day on a run. Uh -huh. it, it holds memories. Is that, is that for you? Do you have that or not? You know, I think probably I did. And I do, I can't deny, I do have lots of stuff that the kids made ever since they were little, but they're stored away in a box. And I just, you know, I just don't go to them. Well, first of all, because I'm traveling, so I don't have them available. So, but it's not something I go to. And so um, pictures, I do have tons of pictures stored on my cell phone though, you know, and those are, are great memories for, for me there. You know, and every once in a while, you know, I'm flipping through a picture trying to find something and, and I see that and that triggers the memory. But uh, there's something about, you know, having all this stuff in somebody's home that just, I don't know, for me, it seems heavy. So I let go of so much stuff when I decided to go travel, just let it go. And some people, you know, they built these huge storage centers all over the United States, you know, and probably the world too, because people can't let go of their stuff. They go, okay, well, we got this stuff. Now we're gonna, we got new stuff coming in. So we'll find a storage place to house this stuff because we just can't let go of anything. And I don't know what it is about, you know, America is such a consumer place. And so we're always buying new stuff and then saving the old stuff because we can't let go of it. It's like, it's like this rope or this bond that we have to that stuff. And I think it's the belief systems that, you know, people grew up in, you know, hang on to your stuff because their parents maybe, or their grandparents lived through, through World War I and World War II where things were, you know, you needed that because God knows when you'll need, you know, that piece of rope or that piece of rubber band to fix something. So, but those beliefs are all passed down. And then, and then when we take those on, not knowing we're in a totally different stage of mind and, and place where we don't need that. We don't need to hang on to those things anymore. You know, you know, we, we said when we were, when we began this series, we weren't going to script it, but and things would just happen as they happen. We, yeah. learned, we learned that approach from Kyle Cease, 
uh, a mentor really to both of us um, who used to be a, uh, he was a Comedy Central top comic and became a kind of a transformational coach. One of the things about you that's always kind of intrigued me because it's different from me, I have always wanted to stay where I was born, you know, in the mm -hmm. area where I was born, very tied to where I was born, probably yeah. for a number of reasons from childhood, et cetera. You travel everywhere. So it, there's something different there. What, what do you think about that? You know, it just sits well, straight. Yeah, and I can't speak for you. And what yeah. you want to do is perfect. And what somebody else wants to do is, is also perfect. So we can, everything can be okay when we do these things. And, but for me, it's like, I lived in, um, I grew up in Missoula, Montana, and then we moved to a little town called Ronan, Montana, which was um, north of there. Um, but never going outside of Montana. We had family in Eastern Montana, but we never went, I never traveled to Idaho, which is just <laughs> not very far, but, you know, but always in that confines and it felt like a box to me. And I can remember um, getting out of high school and going, I want to travel. I just want to see what else is out there. Um, well, I ended up, you know, listening to my dad because parents knew better. Um, and that, that was the belief I had at that time. Um, and going to college and then not traveling. And it wasn't until I probably got to be six years age that I go, what are you doing? You're still, even though I had moved to Washington, you're still in this little box and not going anywhere. It's just like, I just have finally had to let go of that idea that I had to stay in this box that I could go do whatever I wanted, that I could go see different places, that I could go meet people and just, and just travel. And it was crazy. I can remember the first time I drove down to California, I was like, whoa, what are you doing? you know, and the traffic and my ego was just freaking out about this whole thing. But, you know, it's gotten the custom for me just to jump on the road and be safe and go. Did you, did you get homesick? No. No, I miss, you know, I miss my kids and stuff. But with the technology we have, we can jump online. And I can jump online like with you and just go, you know, I've never been to Chicago before, but we get to jump online. That's what's cool. Somebody said, this is a great time to be around alive because we can jump online. We can talk to people clear around the world, which I have. And we don't have to, you know, be there, but yeah. So what do you, what do you consider home? Where? Uh, you know, wherever my heart is, I'm at home. Sounds like a song. Are you going to start singing a song? <laughs> I feel a Broadway you know, song coming sometimes up. My, sometimes my home is just my car. And other times it's, you know, at a, at a campground. And, and it's been here in, in different people's homes that, you know, with these, estate, these estates I've been clearing out. So it's been here and been there. And it's been, yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure to our viewers when he says I'm clearing out estates, he doesn't mean he's going in with a truck and taking all their stuff. It's no. one of the jobs he does is to help sell off estates. So just just I want no. to make sure that the if law enforcement is watching this, John, that uh, you don't get in any trouble. <laughs> really? Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today, yeah. I I first met you. I met you before you met me. I know. Okay. I know. I, you saw me on. Yeah, I saw you in video with with Cal Cease, and it was. Um, I think the title of the video was "Allow Yourself to Be Unloved," something like that. Yeah. And in, <laughs> it, in it, you started off by talking about. And you gave permission to use it. So that's sure. why I'm talking about it here. You started off by talking about, you know, how you things just weren't working out in terms of the coaching business and they weren't happening as fast as you wanted them to happen. And in talking with Kyle, he talked with you about that was kind of the smoke 
and what was the fire? What was the real core stuff? And it was about going back to that kid, that child, and saying, you know, what was the real pain? What was the real thing? Because a child of five wouldn't be saying, oh, I can't get what I most need to happen right now, you know, with my coaching business, that kind of thing. What did that kid right. want? What, what did that kid most want to say, right? And you said in the video, you said, you know, I'm not loved, I'm lost. And I felt that myself. And so I was, I was just thinking about that, getting back to that pain, you know? And I think many of us have that, where it's like going back to that original pain, that original thing that kid was saying or feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And then we started this call by you talking about letting go of things. So I wanted to talk about that, about when you go back. So it's been, what, a couple of years since that video? Something like that? Yeah. Okay. Probably. So has that, have you done that? Have you gone back and given space and watched and listened to that kid and has it helped? Yeah. I mean, what I guess I want the audience to know we're talking about, we're doing inner child work or we're talking about inner child work here. Yeah. So it is, it does help and it's a process and it's something that you have to continually do because your inner child, you know, had gone through, has gone through some traumas when he was a little kid, whether he was spanked when he was a little kid or he was left out of, no, you can't go because you're too small. You know, and through these traumas, which can be a plethora of different things, the little kid can be just feel like I'm left out. And now I'm separate from everybody else. I'm no longer um, a part of, of the family because, um, and it could be, I'm no longer part of the family because I'm the funny one and nobody can connect with me. I'm the funny one, or I have this talent and everybody else doesn't, and then they're jealous of me. So they can grow up and feel um, disconnected, and then they and then and disconnect from themselves too. But yeah, there's a you know there was some trauma there about I'm not feeling loved. Um, I feel lost. I don't know which way to turn. You know, I don't have a compass, and it's it's um, for the adult that we are right now to go back and be that dad, that parent for that child that's just feeling unloved. And to be kind to him, to him and to sit with him and just allow him to be that. But how is it for you? Tell me about like when you do that, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you're with him, how, how old is he when you're with him? Probably about five years old, five, six years old. Yeah, because when I'm with my little Jimmy, you know, he's about that age. What do you think he's, what is he feeling when you're with him? Sad. He can be sad. He can be hurt. He can be, you're not listening. Did he have anyone to listen back then? I don't think he always did. In fact, maybe there were there probably lots of times that nobody did or they didn't understand. You know, I had I grew up in a family of seven children. And so, you know, you have your the older children are doing things and the younger ones are doing things, and sometimes you get lost in this big family. There's not always time, you know, in the in that family where you had a father that um was working and going to school and then have all these children and needed to get rest and sleep himself, you know, and mom doing the best he can. And it's like the, sometimes the best times I had or the things that I enjoyed with her was like, all right, we're going to hang out and you're going to fold diapers <laughs> because that was the thing to the constant laundry, you know, of all these, of all these kids. Now, you're so, able to look back now and say, oh, they were all, they had seven kids, they had a lot to do. But when you were five, you know, you 
you weren't able to make those comparisons and that those, you know what I mean? You weren't able to say, and I was, I think it back to myself at that age, it's very hard to think back to yourself at that age, right? And to go, how mm -hmm. was I feeling? You know, at, at, at five years old, I'm sure I just felt alone. Like yeah. something was wrong, but I think what happens is it becomes not that something's wrong, there's something wrong with me. I don't yeah. fit. Everybody else fits, I don't fit. What, and I don't mm -hmm. know what to do about it. So I got to cool. figure out a way to fit and to keep fitting. Mm -hmm. So for me, that became people pleasing. You yep. know, I got to do, if I do just the right thing, I'll be able to fit and I'll be able to be loved, but I can't do the wrong thing because then I won't be. Oh. You know, it was how is, like, if you go back to your little guy, I so I so hear you, James. It's like, you know, it's like, well, you know, and I'm gonna steal some of this content that Kyle has given us, but it's like you get born into this family where there's two giants that are supposed to raise you, you know. Well, and as we get older, we find out the ways to get love is to make this one happy doing this and this one happy doing this. And it's like, and you don't want to you know, do this for that one because that might not make them happy. And they might be just pissed off and angry when they came home and there's nothing I can do. And so it's like, oh, the best thing for me to do is hide in my room doing something. So they won't even, you know, know that I'm there. So, you know, out of all that, the different things show up and, and we do things because <laughs> we are only five you know, or six or seven or whatever, but we know we get food from these two giants and we know that we um, get clothing and, and sometimes love, but we're doing the best we can because that's all we know how to do. And our parents have done the best they can. That's what they know how to do. And so I'm not going to, um, I'm gonna have compassion for them too, but you do have to go back to that little kid and go, how are you feeling? You know, and if they're feeling sad or lost, it's like, it's a journey that's got to be done, you know, throughout your life, because these little kids have suffered these huge traumas. And so and people have say it's like peeling an onion, you know, you peel one layer off and then, then something else comes up. But trauma is a, is a, a huge thing. And there was a big um, TV show on it over the last past week and I forget the gentleman who did that but I think his last name was Gabor or something like that but they talk about trauma that gets stuck in your body you know for all sorts of different things from one one kid was going god my dad would spank me you know and then you get that trauma and then the other little kid was like they my parents gave me everything too bad they gave me everything because they go here's everything you need but they never spent any time with me. So there's there's trauma there too. So see, I get I get it being with your that child, right? Yeah. This is where it gets tricky because then the brain, my brain wants to jump in, right? Okay. And it's like does that actually help anything by like my child, my five-year-old child was many years ago. So I can't actually be with my five-year-old child and it's me, so I can't be with him. So is it actually doing anything to do that? You know, that there's that kind of skeptic that, you know, the brain, the ego kicks in. Yeah, but, the ego would kick, kick you know? in. So but what do you if think? You have if you had a little boy or a little girl with you, would you tell them that? Let's say you have um, a, your new grandson. Somewhere in the future, you're gonna have an, a grandson or a granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And you go, I can't relate to you. I can't relate to you, so would you tell them that? Would you tell that little kid that? 
but that's saying that our five-year-old selves still exist. They do, they exist inside you. And they're the ones that feel lost. They're the ones that don't feel loved. They're the ones that go, hey, somebody just, you know, shit on me. And, and I don't know why. Mm. They're the ones that say, they don't care about my ideas. I don't, I don't know why. They come up all the time. And it's for us to go back and be with them. I don't think we lose them. They're just there. And, and, and for us to allow them to be there and allow them to show up in any which way they can is so important. Because like in that video, and if people want to go back to that video, it's you know open for everybody to see, but <clears throat> you can't just say, oh, I saw you yesterday. How about if you see me today too? How about if you're always just present with me? Wouldn't it be oh. nice to, to love that little kid so much so that you become really friends and he knows you always have his back. He knows you always have his back. And so that when you want to go do something, he's going to be, he's going to be fine. He's going to be okay with it. He's going to say, cool, let's go do this. Let's go try something new. Let's go play something new. And will that help you in your life? Like, will that help you as an adult? Yes. I just have to say yes. And it's something that everybody's going to have to go try themselves. You know, it's funny. I find myself, first of all, I'm going to post, I'll put a link to the video of you with Kyle in the description of this video. So yeah. people, people can go and look at it below. Um, I find myself getting really angry at my little child. Little Jimmy, you know, when he's weak, when I'm weak, when I'm not courageous, when I do things I'm ashamed of, I get really pissed at him, really angry. It's like, what, when you do that, what? What? When you do that, what happens for you? I just feel bad. You know, it doesn't help, but I just, it's like, will you ever just leave me alone? Will you ever just let me live a courageous, you know, happy life and just, just get the hell out of here? And would you tell that to the little kid? I've seen you do this both ways. I've seen you do it just like you talked. And I've also seen you just be a space for that little kid and just pull them on your knee. And it's like, and then what's that like? That's really powerful, but you know, it's back and forth every day. It's like a roller coaster and it's just, it gets exhausting. You know, and, and then I just want to, and then I just say, oh, it's not working. You know, I just can't do this anymore. It's not working. Okay. I know for a fact that that's your ego saying it's not working. Your ego wants to keep you in a certain way. And I just know if you would just take the time, like we do in meditation, and just sit with it and allow the feelings to come up that you and your um, little child could have just a great time together and you become the best of friends together and be amazed how the turnaround you would see in, in yourself. Do you ever get angry at your little child? I think I used to. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. I do remember. I remember an incident, incident right now that's coming up when you said that. Because I was on the way to, um, and this was years ago, but I was on my way to um, an interview for a position. Oh, for I was at, at that time, I'd wanted to go into physical therapy and I had to do an interview. And I tell you, my little kid was acting out so bad. And it was like, I want to go too. I want to go too. And it's like, yeah. and I 
physically shut the bedroom door and I said, stay here. I need to go to this interview. I really can't have you bouncing around in my head right now. So it was craziness as, as I'm thinking about this, you know, what I did to that little kid um, that was inside me. Why did he want to go with you? I don't know. I think he was scared and he was scared at that time about what are, what are we jumping into? What are we, you know, you want to go off and do more college, you know, and yeah, it was, a, it was a crazy time. <laughs> so, so did he want to go with you or did he want to keep you from going? I think he wanted to go with me, but I just like, I just wanted some space to myself to do all this. And how did and, go and had I went ahead and said, you know what? Oh, we need some time together, you know, and prep this because I because it was coming up, but I had no idea about awareness. I had no idea about inner child work. I had no idea about all this stuff. Um, then and you just you find out that you learn you're constantly learning things. But it's like, you know, you could have I could be in the armchair quarterback and go, you know, this is. I could, I could do this, da, 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 da. But it's like, I was doing the best I could at that time. So just forgiving my, what, 35-year-old self for what I was doing. So that's another thing, you know, I think there are different times along the way that you can just, like, let's go back and just be a space for that 35-year-old kid that just was, you know, going through a divorce, had two beautiful daughters, working two jobs, going to college, and just trying to hold everything together. So it's yeah. not just going back to our five-year-olds, it's going back to our teenage person, teenage us. It's going back to our 20-year-old us, 30-year-old us. Yeah. However we old we are. Yeah. And then, you know, recognize recognizing the traumas and just being a space for them and holding them and just God, you were doing it. and being kind. I think we get to a point, I think there's times where we go, damn it, why did I do that again? Or, you know, you're so stupid, John. Why did you do something like that? Um, but it's like being kind to ourselves and just going, you're doing the best you can all the time. All the time. It feels so much better. Life is so much easier that way. There's so much more of a flow. There's so much, you know, God never looks upon us. And um, it's just, you know, Warda, why can't you figure this out? Never. He's always just saying, or she, um, you know, I love you. I just love you. And I think that's so important when we, if we were doing inner child work, it's just like, you know what? I just love you. Show up however. You just, you didn't get the love you needed at that time. And I just love you. Come and sit on the couch with me or watch a ball game or whatever, whatever you want to do and show up how you want, you know? If you were that five-year-old John, Johnny, and somebody told you that, how do you think you'd react at first? Oh my, Whew. I mean, this, Oh my gosh, if somebody just sat me on the couch and said, hey, just talk to me. Just tell me how you're feeling. What's going on in your life? That would have been so kind, so nice. You know, I just implore parents if, you know, to do, to be so kind and be so loving to your children and to yourselves because you guys are brand new parents and it's like, be kind to each other. Look at each other. Be present with someone instead of going, no, I don't have my phone with me. So, but checking your phone or just watching the TV or or have my, my dad, I would come out to see my dad in the morning. He got up like two o'clock in the morning so he could um, do his milk route in the morning. But he had, would have the newspaper up in front of his face and you'd go up there and couldn't even chat with him, couldn't talk with him because he was so glued to what was going on in the newspaper. Would have been so nice if we put the newspaper down and just so you could have a conversation with him. Ooh. Yeah. How nice would that have been? But it didn't happen. But you have to be that person now for that inner child. 
to go, <clears throat> hey, I, I'm showing up, you know? It's like, well, I need to put down my newspaper. I need to put down my phone because you're here and you're present and you need something from me or want something from me. So take the time. And we can be so, that for each other's inner child. Yeah. Right? I mean, you've done that for me, just kind of be in the space. When I bring up stuff, I do the same for you and, you know, my, my wife and, you know, we, we can all do that for each other too. take care of each other's inner children too. Yeah. Or, and just allow your, you know, when, when we've done this for each other, it's like, just be a space for that and how, and then you stop somebody go, you know, we get into a rant about something, but just, Hey, just stop for a second. And how does that feel? And, you know, and what is your inner child thinking right now? It's like, ugh. Oh. It's always going back. It's always going inside. This is a total inside out job. It's never, it's never, I'm gonna go buy the new Ferrari and now I'm gonna feel good. It's never, I'm gonna go buy the new home and then now I can keep up with the Joneses. It's never that. It's always inside and then out. Work on yourself. Make a space for that little kid that just wants to be seen, that just wants to be played with. You might find out, I don't need to go buy the Ferrari. <laughs> You know, I'm comfortable with what we have right now. So, but if you want to go buy the Ferrari after, you know, go do it. But it's not going to make you happy. It's like um, in the video with, that you had with Kyle. And he said, if that little boy said, I feel lost, I feel alone. You probably wouldn't do a whole lot of talking at that point. You would probably just hold them. You know, I love you. I'm here. Yeah. Right. I'm not going anywhere. I got you. You know, you're amazing. Yeah, I have another um, story if we have time, but yeah. we, we have time. Yeah. I remember being in my apartment and getting up and going um down the hallway and the feeling this tug on my leg and i'm going did i catch my leg my pant leg on a nail or something and i look down and snow and then going <laughs> starting to walk some more and it's like this has got i feel like i got this little kid wrapped around my leg what is going on i'm not being seen i'm not being seen okay and it's like okay fine let me take care of this issue and then I'll talk to you. Let me take care of this. And I see you close your eyes on me, but. Um, and then I feel the tug again as I start to go down the hallway. So uh, you're not, I'm not, I'm not being seen. You know, I want, help me, talk to me. I had to reach down, I physically reached down, picked up this little kid who's not visibly there and sat him on the table. And then I go, okay, what can I do for you? How can I help? What's going on? You know, something just came to me when you said that. Whenever I'm not being true to myself, I'm not seeing him. I'm yeah. not honoring him. I'm not loving him. Whenever yeah. I don't speak my truth, I'm not paying attention to him, listening to him, speaking his truth for him. He couldn't speak, you know, back then, just felt like he couldn't speak and I, I need to speak for him. Mm -hmm. All right, well. How does that? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, John. Man, I so love you. I just love these conversations that we have with each other. They're so eye-opening and they still, you know, I still get another layer of an onion that has been peeled off by us doing these things. So, and if it resonates with other people, I think that's great. And if it doesn't, maybe that's just for James and I to do these things. So I love it. 
Thanks, John. Love you too, man. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Okay, James. Bye.